Hey, what's up? It's Alex Ibanez Guy 88, and we have the Ibanez MSN 100 Marcos Fogli signature model. Italian-based guitarist, music composer, and producer. A lot of people know him for his part in James Labrie's solo um, project, as well as his own personal solo albums. He currently has three, uh, so if you haven't checked them out, I definitely recommend you check out his discography. Now his signature model, the MSM100, is based off of the key skeleton of the AZ series. Um, this features an older body, triple A flame maple top. The color is Fabula Green Burst. This features the Godo 1805 vintage trim. It features one tone, one volume, and a three-way selector right here. This also features DiMarzio pickups. It includes a tone zone in the bridge and a Air Norton in the neck. Locking tuners, they are the same Godo HAP uh, locking tuners here as well as this one-piece maple Aztec treated roasted maple neck. Abalone inlays, stainless steel frets, and the Luma inlay side dots. It also comes in a nice Ibanez hard case. So one thing to note about this that separates this guitar from the rest of the models is the, for one, the DiMarzio pickups, and then also the layout of the controls here. The three-way, the volume, and the tone. Now this is coming straight from the same configuration as his previous premium model, the MS-1. But also, I believe there's another guitar that he did get this inspiration from, which is this guitar right here. This is the JPM P3. There's also a P4 that he has that includes the camo finish that you can see him playing on his YouTube channel. Now, if you'd like to see a review on the original JPMs, let me know in the comments down below. If it gets enough likes, we'll see what happens. So once again, this is a guitar that Ibanez did not send me. Um, so I did purchase this myself so I can give an honest, truthful review, just like I did with the AZ previously, the 2402 in the Seafoam Green. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check out my channel and you'll see the full review for that. So for $24.99.99 US dollars, uh, it comes at a pretty hefty penny, that's a quarter of $10,000 if you want to think of it in that perspective. It's a lot of dough, and a lot of people expect this to play amazingly out of the box. So before I sent it to Ibanez, I wanted to see how it felt out of the box. Now one thing to mention is that the Seafoam uh, came out of the box at a decent um, level as far as action goes. This one, however, it was set pretty high, but um, that's the only thing I did tweak before I sent it out was I, I lowered the action just to see how it played and how it felt. Um, overall, after I adjusted, I had the same problems like I did with the Seafoam Green. I did have a couple high frets at the higher register here, so I wasn't able to bend uh, any of the high frets doing any double stop bends without it um, choking out. So that's one thing that I wanted to address to Ibanez before giving it to them but they did find a few other problems. So it took them about a week to get this all taken care of. Um, I do appreciate the guys at the LA Custom Shop. If you guys are watching this, you know who you are. I really appreciate your hard work. They set this up in D standard. So this has nine to 46 um, gauge strings. Uh, another thing too, uh, I requested the bridge to have a little bit more of a uh, flutter action per se. It comes preloaded with three um, springs for the tremolo. They just took out one of them, so you have two springs here, uh, and it kind of it kind of balances it out, and it gives it a little bit more of a slinky feel as well as the um, lower tension uh, strings for the whole step down. So it, they almost feel like you're playing with eights instead of like your traditional nines or tens. <laughs> One thing 
that they did was that they leveled the frets from the 15th fret all the way down to the 24th fret so they were able to bring the action even lower to create that little fall away like I did to the previous Seafoam Green. Another thing too that they uh, addressed was the, the nut. So I guess the original nut that was on it wasn't cut properly so some of the slots were at a slight angle so they completely replaced it reshaped it and they re-slotted it and now it's straight as an arrow so one last issue that they addressed to me when i picked it up over at the custom shop was the fact that the actual neck pocket is a little bit wider than most az bodies so my seafoam green um 2402 uh, the, the neck and the body sit in together pretty pretty snug. Uh, with this one, I'm able to fit a business card right through freely on the uh, the top side facing you. I'll show you guys a close-up of that um, in the meantime, but it's something that they were, they were going to shim, but they asked me if it really bothered me. Um, I, I haven't had any issues. Um, some people like having that clearance there. Some people say that it ruins your sustain because the body and the neck aren't as one per se. So we'll see. So I do have a couple of the Aaron Norton's and the Tone Zones in some of my other guitars behind me. And I gotta say, you know, it's a good combination. If anything, the only difference between this setup and like the JPMs is that the bridge has a Steve Special instead of the Tone Zone. However, um, a tone zones like in my Paul Gilbert and a few of my other 550s. It's a very uh, high output, but it, it doesn't lose clarity as far as um, uh, high gain, mid gain, and then and also when you're playing clean passages or clean in general, it sounds very um, bright. And the neck pickup is really awesome as far as the Air Norton goes. Um, very a very smooth and very rich in the harmonic register. Uh, for soaring lead playing. As far as the weight too, it feels pretty balanced. Um, and I still have uh, a little bit of a tuning issue, but that's why I went ahead and installed the Wilkinson locking saddles right here. I'm not the only one who has done this. The maestro himself has actually done it as well, as I can show you a picture right here on his Instagram. So to me, I, I believe that he understands that there are some tuning issues on this guitar as well. I went through it on my previous video. I'm not going to go through it a lot on this one just because uh, I made my point clear in the previous video. So all in all, for a non-double locking tremolo, this does stay in tune pretty well, um, more or less, uh, especially with the locking Wilkinson saddles here. So the strings aren't on the actual string tree right here. Uh, they've lowered all three of the posts as low as they can go. So you get that break angle. I've dropped the bar down like you would on a double locking tremolo and I haven't had the strings pop out of their slots. So that break angle is pretty good. So I recommend you guys doing it yourself as well. <laughs>
So overall, I'm a big fan of this guitar. This has been um, my main for a few weeks now. It's just a, a very comfortable feeling neck. Like I said before, it does take some time to get used to. So if you're used to like the um, Super Wizard necks or Prestige Wizards, or if you're getting anything from like a thinner uh, profile, um, it is going to take some time to get used to, but once you do, it's a phenomenal neck. I definitely like the profile. It is a 12 inch radius, so it's not as flat as like your, your 16 or 17 inch radius, but it still does feel pretty good in the hand. Now for the, for the price point of $24.99.99 plus tax, if you are having these issues like I've had, I definitely recommend you guys um, replace it try to ask for um, a swap. I know there are a lot of stores out there if you're not 100% satisfied with the instrument that you do receive. Um, sometimes they will allow you to do a couple swaps just to find the right one. Now for the price point, it, it is a shame that um, an instrument like this at this quality and craftsmanship would have these kind of issues. However, these are just some things that you might find in most production runs, and this includes uh, guitar companies, you know, all over the place. If you are a crazy fanatic like me with tuning and everything, um, I, I would still get this guitar. I've broken this in for quite some time now, and at the moment it is pretty stable, but if you guys were super crazy or even crazier than I am with tuning, the other guitar that I would recommend to get would be this guy right here. So this is the Ibanez 550 Genesis collection um, in desert yellow. So I would recommend you guys getting one of those. If you want to see a review on that bad boy, let me know in the comments below as well. So that wraps up everything for the MSM 100. Um, if you do like this guitar, uh, give it a like. If you don't like this guitar, give it a thumbs down. But we all know this thing looks awesome. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, hit the like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll know whenever I do post anything new, reviews, covers, um, new songs, whatever, you name it, you'll see it. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good one and we'll see you in the next video.